Okay, guys, um, this is my third video, part three of Chicken Palooza. I have, um, what have I done so far? I did shredded chicken, I did freezer meals, um, I cut up a ton of chicken in chunks, and so now I have my canning jars. I'm using wide mouth pints, all washed, and they're soaking in hot water. They're all ready to go. I have my rings. My lids are in a pot of hot water on the stove. You don't really have to do that anymore, but I like to have some salt. And I have some um, Frank's Red Hot here that I think I'm going to make this first batch. Um, like I'm going to say buffalo, but it's it's just it's just um, Chuck. What is this stuff called? Hot sauce. It's hot sauce. It's not really buffalo sauce. But I'm just going to put that. I'm going to pour some right into the bags because I read the ingredients and it's like vinegar. Um, hang on, I'm, I'm a little... It's cayenne pepper, vinegar, water, salt, and garlic powder. So it's all good to can. I'm going to pour some directly in the bags, into the jars, and um, I'm going to raw pack them and I'm not going to put any additional liquid in it. Just whatever sauce is on these and um, it'll make its own juice because these are nice and fresh and I will um, yeah let me get the the lids real quick and we'll do a couple jars I'll show you what I'm doing and then we will um, get them in the canner all right hold on for okay I hope you can see let me maybe I should move you on to the other side that might be easier all over here. okay so what I'm doing you can see here I just empty the water out of my jars. I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of canning salt into each jar. I'm just going to, I've never done the buffalo one before, but I feel, uh, I keep calling it buffalo. It's actually just hot sauce. I'm going to give this a shake. And I think if I add this to a, um, a measuring cup, it might be easier to deal with. Okay, let's see what I got here. Do I have a towel? I think it'll just be easier to pour from a, a spout. Okay, so I just put it in a measuring cup, and I'm going to pour it in here. And again, this is getting raw packed, and it's going to make its own juice, so I'm not even adding any, any juice to it. Is one and a quarter inch of head space. Packed loosely. And then I figure when you make this, if you wanted to make dip or something, you could always add some melted butter um, when you make whatever it is that you're making with it. Put another piece or two in there. So I'm happy that my husband found these wide mouth jars in the basement. I didn't think I had wide mouth pints, which is going to make it that much easier to get the chicken out of the jars. And then also, once they're used, it'll be that much easier to um, clean the jars. So I have a pressed, well I have a couple of pressure canners, but 
So what I'm using is a Presto pressure canner. And I am doing, um, I have three quarts of water in there on the stove. And I'm going to get these, um, okay, just to show you what I'm doing. I probably could put like another piece of meat in each one. Okay, that's good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe the rims with some vinegar. That will get any kind of grease or sauce or anything off of there and it'll make sure that I get a good clean seal okay then I'm going to take a a warm lid and then I'm going to put a um, ring on just finger tight so finger tight means you just turn it until it makes its natural stop. You don't force it any further. Okay. This is what we have so far. I'm going to throw these in a the canner. That one was like a little bent. Okay, that's good. I'm going to put these in the canner. And I'm going to fill the rest of these jars. And then I will show you where we're at. Okay, so I was able to get 16 wide mouth pints in here. Um, most of them are the buffalo chicken that I showed you. Well, I keep calling it buffalo, but it's basically hot sauce chicken. And then I had a couple, maybe, let's see, one, two, I think I have four cans of plain in there. So now I'm just putting the gasket back in my top. I think I have my canner backwards. Ha! Huh, I do. All right, let's see if I can do this without burning myself because it's already on. Oh! I'm probably scraping up my stove top. Oh well. One more scrape's not going to kill it, right? Hope not. Okay. I have to have my husband tighten up the handle on that for me. Okay, so I put the top on. I'm going to crank up my heat. I have it on low, and now I'm going to put it on a medium high. And now I have to wait for here. You need to wait till it comes to pressure, and then it's going to start steaming out of here. Once it starts steaming, that you could see a steady stream, then we're going to time it for 10 minutes. So um, this could take a while. Let me go, and when it starts steaming, I will bring you back and show you what that looks like. And then we'll start the timer and we'll come back again. Okay, so I'm still waiting for the pressure canner to come up to pressure so I could start um, seeing when the steam is coming out. So in the meanwhile, I'm doing a couple of these little bags of salsa chicken. And I'm the only one in my house that eats it. And Tommy likes them, my son, that he lives alone also. So I only put like two chicken breasts in each bag. So now I'm just going to throw in the rest of the ingredients. Super, super simple. Um... If you have a larger family, you could probably put up to like three or four big breasts in here. Check one open some of these for me. So basically in each bag, I'm just going to put a brick of cream cheese and um, some salsa. And that's it. You put it in your crock pot. You do it on low for six hours. And then you, um, right at the end when you're ready to eat it, you just put some, you're supposed to put a bag of taco seasoning in. However rarely do I remember to do that and it tastes good without it so if you forget it it's really not a big deal I suppose you could um, put the taco seasoning in now but I really don't care one way or the other whether it gets in there so I'd rather just leave it I think Tommy leaves it out of his so I'll just leave it out of mine too because I don't know who's getting which bags Okay, so that's two bags. 
Did you open that one? You didn't open it. You just I opened two. Did you? I feel like I opened two. He, he's calling me a slacker because he thinks that I only opened up one cream cheese, which I might have because I don't remember. Did I only do one for real? Mm -hmm. Wow. The mind is a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was a non-compliant brick of cream cheese. Okay, so then... Um, How much because there's still some in there. Okay, so I'm looking behind me and we're getting some steam off of that. Um, Yeah, okay, so let me get this going here real quick. It doesn't matter if it does it a couple more minutes than necessary. I can hear it too. I probably should try one of my new. Okay, let me get, I'll get back to that on my own time. Okay, so these are the salsa chickens, and I have four of them made, and those are delicious. And what I like to do with these is um, you can just put the meat into a flour tortilla and eat it like that, but sometimes I make them like... Um, what are those things called? Like quesadillas? So I take the meat and I put it inside of a flour tortilla with a little cheese on it. I fold it in half and then I put it in like a grill pan. And I do that. Okay, let me do this. I have one more, which is barbecue chicken. And then, um, actually, I probably should just turn you around and do this real quick. All right, hold on one second. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, if it's picking up on camera or not. But right here, in front of my hand, is the steam coming up. You really can't see it, I don't think. But it is totally a steady stream. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to, um, it just started, so I'm going to time it for 10 minutes. Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. Okay, so once it's, it's going to go for 10 minutes, and then I'm going to put the, ooh, I'm on this side. Ouch, over it. I'm going to put put that on top of it. So let me, that's the weight by the way. I'm going to turn back around and we'll finish the chicken. I'm doing this so you don't see Chuck in his pajamas. Okay. I'm going to close these bags up and I have the one taco chicken that I made before. Um, I think, you know, today's been a good, a good day even though it's been so, so busy. What else did I have going on? I have in the chicken, in the crock pot, I have all those chicken breasts, I, whatever I could fit in there. Because I really like the idea of shredding that chicken and having it for casseroles or if you wanted to do like a, a, a pot pie, because I have some of those vegetables already downstairs, carrots, potatoes, onions, that I can. So that would be super simple. I'll get the, my salsa together. Chuck's going to get me my other chicken that I have for... Um, barbecue chicken and basically again just some big chicken breasts in in some bags and you don't even have to do this as a freezer meal you can throw the barbecue sauce in when you um when you go to cook it but I just feel like I didn't have any in the house when I went to make these and I might not have any in the house when I go to cook these so I figured I'd buy it, throw it in the bags, and then I'm all set. I don't have to worry about shopping. I don't have to worry about, do I have this on my shelf? Okay. Do I need a whole, I think I need a whole drawer for each one. I'll let you open those two. That's 
one. And I'm using, um, what did we get? We got the Heinz Kansas, City. Heinz Kansas City Sweet and Smoky Barbecue Sauce. I like Bullseye, but you know what? It's becoming really hard to find anywhere. So this is uh, a good alternative for us. to say my mind is not great when I'm doing a whole bunch of things at one time. I get like thrown on what I'm doing. But I feel like with this volume of chicken and stuff, you just got to kind of do it. more in these jars but I'm just not getting it out properly so we not want not I'm going to just throw it upside down I think Tommy would like this also he likes the barbecue pork those two to get out of there. He's making a, I don't even know where we're going to stick these in the freezer. It's getting that bad. Shamefully, we have too much stuff in the freezer. But Tommy will come home and clean us out, so we should be good. That steam is really coming out. I'm just waiting for my timer to go off. Okay. No big deal. All right. I'm going to finish putting this together. I'm going to take a break and I'll come back when my 10 minute timer has gone off and I'm going to put the weight on just to show you what I'm doing. Be back in a few. Okay, so I am putting my weight on right now. And then I'm going to um, wait till it comes up to, I can at about 11, 12 pounds of pressure. Anywhere between 12 and 15 is good for me. I usually like 12. Um, I'm going to wait till it comes to 12 pounds and then I'm going to lower my heat so it stays at 12. And again, it'll fluctuate somewhere between 12 and 15. That's where that's where I can at. So, I'm going to do that and once I hit my pressure, I will start timing for 75 minutes because I'm doing pints. So, um, I'll bring you back when we're done. And um I'll bring you back when I'm done. We'll take it off the heat, but we have to let the canner completely come down off of pressure before I can show you the finished jars. So we'll see how late that is. All right, guys, I'll talk to you in a few. Okay, so it's 75 minutes. I am finished canning. I just turned my burner off, and I had Chuck move the whole pot from the right burner over to the left burner. We are going to wait now. Now it's a waiting game. We're going to wait for the pressure. I'm at, um, I think I'm about 13 pounds right now. I'm going to wait for the pressure to go all the way down to zero. The pin will drop. We'll wait a little bit longer. And then I will take off the um, weight. Wow, Chuck is finishing my sentences. Okay, my battery's going to die. I'm going to switch out my battery. I'm going to wait till the pressure drops to zero, and I'll bring you back just every little step and show you what I'm doing. All right, be back soon. Probably not, but I will be back. Okay, so the pressure has dropped down, and the the pressure, I don't even know what this is called, this this fell. 
So I'm going to, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, by the way. That's why I'm slightly co incoherent right now. This is coming off. And I'm just going to... I'm just going to crack this. I'm not even going to take it off. And the reason I like to do that is because I don't want the juices siphoning out of the chicken. So we release the pressure. The pressure's all out and then I'm just leaving it like this. It's just crack, a little steam escaping. And I'll come back and check it in a bit. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes since I cracked it open. I'm going to take the top off now. And I'm going to let them sit here for another 15 minutes or so. Um, as you can see, or maybe you can't, I don't know. I can see. They're still like bubbling in the jars and that's totally normal and that's what you want. Okay, so I did the double stack. I'm going to give these about 15 more minutes or so, maybe a little more, mm, probably like 15 minutes should do it. And I'll come back with you then and we will take them out and put them on a, a cookie sheet. And then I will call this chicken palooza over with and get to bed. All right, guys, I'll see you in, in about 15 or 20 more minutes. Okay, so it's like another 20 minutes since our last, um, the last time we were on. And I'm going to remove them and put them on a cookie sheet here. So let's see what we got. We have, remember, different kinds in here. Looks like a plain. They look good. Okay. So as you can see, this is the, I'm going to call it buffalo, but it's basically hot sauce. It's not very saucy at all, so you definitely will have to add some more buffalo, um, some buffalo sauce when you make it. If you if you're gonna do it like a sandwich or a dip, but that's that's cool. At least it'll have some of the flavor infused into it. I probably could fit a lot more on this pan, but. I'm going to um, move it from the stove to the back counter. Chuck is in bed. Okay, let me move this over. They're hot and they're heavy. Okay, and then I have to remove the disc in here because these are pints because they're pints I was able to double layer them so now I just put that on there and let's go for the bottom row there we go everybody looking good so far so good and while we were, um, while I was waiting for these to be done, I noticed that I heard, um, I heard a lot of the lids popping. I'm going to 
Swing you around. Cards make you dizzy. Let me show you what we got going on. Okay, let's see. Just to show you quick, quick. This is the end of Chicken Palooza. It's really not, though, because honestly, I have two big bags of chicken in the freezer that I was going to can also, but honestly, I'm beat. It is 2.36 a.m. I ended up with 11 bags of the cooked shredded chicken. That was for my two batches of the crock pot chicken. And that is 11 bags, 22 cups, 16 jars of canned chicken. Oh god, I don't even remember how many freezer meals. There's got to be over 20 freezer meals. And, um, and more. And there's more stuff too. So, I think this is was successful. I am going to call officially Chicken Palooza is over. So I hope you guys enjoyed these um, last couple days with me. Um, if you haven't done so already, please hit that red subscribe button and like and share this with your friends. If you have any questions, leave me a message in the um, comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Alright guys, thanks for hanging in there. Have a good evening.